in New York City after a snowstorm. They push all the snow into the street so cars will run it over and it'll melt faster. They're horrible for boosted boards though. Running, running every day, getting my miles Come on, in. Let's go, Jimmy. You remember Jimmy? Jimmy Conrad uh, for training me. Let's keep it. Keep, you ready? Keeping me strong. <laughs> solid, solid run out there, Jimmy. <gasps> Woo! Eight and a quarter miles, 720 pace. We were chit chatting. It would have been a 650 pace. Easy. We're talking about marriage. We're talking about love, work, real life stuff. Real life stuff. All right, Jimmy. <laughs> Today's the first day of spring, which is okay. FDNY. <laughs> That's awesome. Today being the first day of spring means yesterday was the last day of winter. Thank you very much. How you doing? It means that we're on the up, the upswing. That it's getting warmer, not getting colder. It means it's the start of a new season and something new more broadly. You gotta see my new studio shooting setup. This is like my point and shoot camera, my little camera that I'll do like vloggy style stuff with. But when I'm here in the studio and I'm shooting like talking to cam, look at this thing. The heart of this is this here A7R2, which is a Sony camera. Then I have this like house built around it, which then holds this funky arm thing here. At the end of this arm is a monitor. I have this other funky little arm here. This arm holds the microphone so it can be close to me without getting in frame. And then lastly, I have this thing, which I cut down myself, see that? This is a light. So when you add all this stuff up, see, that's me there. There's the light, microphone, camera. That's what it looks like. See, I always like to have one camera in here that's set up dedicated just to like talking to camera shots so I don't have to break this thing down. Plus, the image quality is better. Ready? This is my little camera. This is the big camera. Little camera, big camera. Little camera, big camera. It's a pretty big difference, right? I mean, I like this camera. This is a rock solid camera, but look how pretty this picture is. It's like, it's, this is like a pro shot. Here. Dear Casey, as a person who loves us, you're a true human. I'm making a short video which is missing you. In this video, people from all around the world are releasing a balloon with a card attached to it. Huh. So Lowe's here wants me to Write down what I'm interested in in this card and set it free. All right, Lowe's. Here is your interest card. I'm interested in tacos and making movies. And now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set this free. Okay, there it goes. Now I should say for all of my environmentalist viewers, I'm not one on littering, but when someone, even a stranger, asks me for help with making a video, even if it involves launching a balloon out of my window, I still do it. Hi Casey, what you find in this box is a pair of sunglasses made of bamboo. I recently started my... However, the real reason I'm sending this to you is to thank you. I have followed your YouTube... Justin? Thank you. You think they look good on me? Okay. Hi Casey, my name is Daron Chandler. I'm a big fan of recently enjoyed your creative following storytelling of water clothes team. I hope you enjoy this t-shirt. Late nights, early runs. 
Duran, I really appreciate you sending this to me. It's not entirely accurate though because I usually go to bed super early. I'm not a late night kind of guy. Candace likes to stay up late, not me so much, but I do like to wake up and r run early. So thank you for this t-shirt. You know, I haven't done mail time in such a long time. I used to have a lot, a lot of packages to open up, but now it's, now it's much more manageable. To Francine and Owen, I wish you to love life and never stop dreaming. May beauty and happiness surround you always. That is such a nice thing to say. This kind of looks like Candace and Francine and me. Okay, I can't quite read your signature. That's a hard signature to read right there. But I think that this is from the author of this book. And I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Hi, Su Yen. Thank you for this book. This is a lovely children's book. Francine's gonna love this book. Please open before NYCDFF. I don't know what NYCDFF means. So I just wanna apologize in advance if I didn't open this before NYCDFF. Oh, New York City Drone Film Festival, yes. The New York City Drone Film Festival was this weekend. I spoke at a panel at it. Hey, I did meet the guy that sent this to me. Um, Juan, thank you for this. Congratulations on, congratulations, congratulations on your, your movie. And thank you for this chocolate. That kind of concludes um, mail time. controversy taking place on YouTube right now and it's about YouTube's restricted mode. If you don't know about this controversy there's some links below. Phil DeFranco does a great job of explaining the whole thing. Gigi Gorgeous gives uh, a really smart video about why it is a big deal. My best understanding of this whole restricted mode controversy thing is it's just like YouTube once again screwed up communication. They up communication with their community and the community gets all upset about it because they don't know what's going on and YouTube doesn't explain what's going on. I know I've spent time with the executive team at YouTube, right from Susan the CEO all the way down, wonderful, wonderful people and they're trying to do good things. But they're failing at something very, very important, which is making the YouTube community, the community, the community of creators feel respected, appreciated, and, and to keep us informed of what's going on with this platform that so many creators depend on for their livelihood. And uh, companies that have huge user bases like YouTube, it's very hard to communicate with everyone. I empathize with the struggle. What we'd love to hear about are the initiatives by YouTube to help us creators stay informed and understanding of what's going on and how best to leverage this platform and, and just, in short, better informing what our relationship with the platform looks like and what it's going to look like into the future. Okay, here's why this is a big deal. I'm zooming in. Here's why this is a big deal and why I'm talking about it right now. YouTube as a company has absolute ownership over this video creator community that exists on the entirety of the internet. Nobody's making great videos on Instagram or on Twitter or on Snapchat or on Facebook. If it's great original video content online, it's on YouTube. But YouTube is vulnerable, meaning that YouTube is threatened. Meaning that if the YouTube community doesn't feel well taken care of and a competitor comes along with a product that's just as good but could give creators a bigger audience, a better opportunity for creators, I don't know what would keep creators with YouTube versus trying other platforms. And I think we're at a very interesting place right now in the world of technology because we're gonna start seeing other companies gun for that space that YouTube currently owns. FDNY boat rolling up on me right here. Eh. So I say this because I want to express my own frustration that YouTube, at least outwardly from an optics perspective, YouTube doesn't do enough to make their community feel like they're prioritized. And I know that the people at YouTube know this, but their monopoly on this space is not forever. It is vulnerable. Someone else could come along and do what you're doing and do a better job of it. And every time something like this takes place that upsets the community, it jeopardizes the loyalty that the community has with the platform. I still love you, YouTube. I just don't understand why you don't communicate better with the creators.
not scary. Yeah. Okay. Whoa! It ran into my leg. It, did, it ran into my leg. I don't know how this thing works, honey. Ready? There it goes. Oh no. Is that funny? Alright, let's put the little drone away for now. Or Daddy hold you? You want Daddy to hold you? Yeah.